So in experiment number five, you will be working on Le Chatier's principle and looking at the different applications using five different equilibrium reactions. So Le Chatier's principle has to do with alterations in an equilibrium. So when you look at that back and forth arrow, that means the reaction is at an equilibrium. There's going to be A and B reactants plus C and D products when the reaction is done. So in Le Chatier's principle, you're altering this equilibrium. The reaction has settled, and you're altering that equilibrium. The reaction equilibrium will actually counteract and counterbalance whatever you've done to it. So looking at a hypothetical reaction where we can use Le, Le Chatier's principle, let's take a look at pre-lab part two. So here we have the equation, special emphasis on the back and forth arrows, which symbolize that the reaction is at equilibrium and it has settled at some concentration of A, some concentration of B, some concentration of C, and some concentration of D. This reaction also tells us that it is endothermic because it requires heat. Heat is a reactant. So Le Chatier's principle is about altering this equilibrium and how this reaction will respond. So a catalyst is something that actually does not change anything uh, in terms of the equilibrium. It will not shift either right or it will not shift left. Uh, the equilibrium will not change, but what a catalyst does is really just makes a reaction go faster. So it really affects the rate, how fast the reaction proceeds. It will not make the equilibrium reaction shift left or right to counterbalance the effect. So that, in essence, is a catalyst. It does not shift the equilibrium either way. However, if you add or remove a product or a reactant, uh, then you'll see a shift in the equilibrium. So if you add C, what happens is the reaction will uh, counteract the addition, and the counteraddition of the addition of C or D is to shift to the reaction where it will remove C and D, and that reaction is shifting to the left, to the reactant side. So adding C and D will shift it to the left. Um, removing C and D uh, will cause the reaction, the equilibrium, to shift to the right, to sort of counteract, counterbalance, counterprevail the alteration that was done to the equilibrium. Same thing with the reactants A and B. If you add A or add B, the reaction will shift to the right, so it'll make more C and D to counter negate or counter act the addition of A and B. And uh, likewise, if you remove A and B, the equilibrium will counteract that alteration by shifting to the left, making more A and B. Now, E and F have to do with heat. So this reaction is what we'll call an endothermic reaction because it requires the input of heat. So if you cool a reaction, in essence, you're actually removing heat. So when you remove heat, you are removing in an endothermic reaction heat as a reactant. So the reaction is going to shift to the left. Now, if you add heat by heating it, okay, heat is a reactant in this endothermic reaction. The equilibrium will counteract that and shift to the right to remove that heat. So again, it's just a counterbalance to whatever alteration that you do to the equilibrium. In part three, we actually have an equilibrium reaction. Water plus acetic acid gives you an acid, H3O plus, plus the acetate ion. So when you add NaOH, uh, one thing you have to realize is that NaOH is what's called a base, something we will study later on in this course. And bases actually uh, react with acids. And the acids here is H3O+. So when you add NaOH, you are, in essence, reacting it with the H3O+. So when this reacts with the H3O+, the H3O+, is removed. So you're removing H3O+, from this equilibrium. The, that's the alteration. And the equilibrium will counteract that by producing more H3O+, and in turn produce more acetate ion, uh, C2H3O2-. So let's go over these five reactions that you'll be doing. Most of these reactions will produce what are known as complex ions. So our first reaction is iron plus uh, thiocyanate. 
uh, will give you this iron thiocyanate complex ion. So um, the nitrate and the potassium are spectator ions. They will not participate in this reaction. Uh, but the, uh, notice the back and forth arrow. Anytime you see that, you must think equilibrium reaction that can go back and forth. Now we're going to disturb this equilibrium by adding some iron 3 nitrate. So by adding iron 3 nitrate to this reaction, you're adding more Fe plus 3. This iron F, uh, 3 nitrate has a yellow reddish color. Uh, when you add the Fe plus 3 in the form of iron 3 nitrate, you are going to shift the equilibrium to the right to counteract that addition, and you'll produce more iron thiocyanate complex ion, which is blood red. Right, same thing here with potassium thiocyanate. SCN minus is the thiocyanate ion. Potassium is the counter ion. And uh, when you add some of this, in essence, you're adding more of the SCN ion. Like in part one, the reaction will shift to counterbalance that, and the shift will occur uh, to produce more of the blood red iron thiocyanate complex. So one and two should give you more blood red water. You're diluting the reaction. So when you dilute a reaction, what is the counter prevailing effect? How will the equilibrium respond to counteract the dilution? It will shift to the side that is less dilute or more concentrated. So that is the counteraction uh, by the dilution. Move it to the side of the reaction that's more concentrated. And in this example, the more concentrated one is the side that has two molecules as opposed to the side that has only one molecule. So we would predict this reaction to shift to the left, making us more uh, SCN minus, which is colorless, you can't really see it, and more of the iron plus three in the iron nitrate, which would be more yellowish. In reaction two, you're going to make a nickel ammonium complex. Again, here's the back and forth arrow. Uh, here you're going to add acid in the form of HCl. Any H Three NH3 ammonia is actually a base. It's a weak base, as we'll learn later on in this course. So adding this acid plus this weak base ammonia NH3 will actually produce NH4 plus. NH4, this is the ammonium ion, NH4 plus. Uh, so by this side reaction, the addition of HCl will actually, because it's a source of H plus, will actually remove the NH3 you remove NH3, how will this equilibrium react? It will react to counterbalance that, um, and to counterbalance that, the equilibrium will produce more NH3 and more nickel plus two. The equilibrium will shift to the left. We predict we will go from a bluish uh, tinge in your test tube to something that's more greenish, uh, the color of the nickel that you will add in this reaction. The third reaction has to do with an indicator, methyl orange. Uh, indicator, um, I'll just call it IN. Methyl orange really has a more complex uh, chemical structure that we're not going to concern ourselves with. Uh, the only equilibrium that we are uh, really that's going to be shown here is the um, addition of either a base in the form of NaOH or the acid in the form of HCl. So this is a um, source of OH minus, hydroxide ion. This hydrochloric acid is a source of H plus proton. This is the equilibrium at stake when you work with methyl orange. So the addition of OH minus should neutralize the H plus, essentially removing H plus from this equilibrium. The reaction will counterbalance that by making more H plus. We would expect the reaction to shifting to the right and making more of the IN minus indicator minus with which is reddish pinkish in color. Uh, the IN minus is the methyl orange indicator that has um, lost a proton H plus. So now let's see what happens when you add HCl, uh, which is um, an acid. When you add HCl, you're essentially adding more H plus. So how will the equilibrium counterbalance that addition, that alteration? It will do so by shifting the reaction away, the equilibrium away, from H plus to counterbalance the addition. And so we would predict the reaction equilibrium will shift to the protonated indicator of methyl orange, giving us an orange color. 
this is reaction four, you're going to actually make calcium hydroxide precipitate uh, by mixing these two aqueous solutions. And then you're going to do a gravity filtration, collect some of that white precipitate. Now, this calcium hydroxide white precipitate in it of itself has its own equilibrium between calcium ion and hydroxide ions. So calcium ion plus hydroxide ion gives you calcium hydroxide. However, some of that solid can dissociate. So this in itself is an equilibrium. We call this equilibrium KSP for solubility product constant. So the question here is what happens if you add HCl? So when you add HCl, which is a source of protons, it will react with the hydroxide ion, giving you water. So we're essentially removing OH minus. How will the equilibrium react? It will react by shifting to the side to compensate and make more OH minus. So we would predict that adding an acid will shift this reaction to the right, making more calcium ion and hydroxide ion, in essence, dissolving the solid. Adding a base, which is a source of OH minus, will do the opposite. So when you add a base, what essentially happens is you're adding more OH minus. How will this equilibrium compensate that alteration of the OH minus addition? It will do so by going and shifting to the side that has less OH minus. We would predict that adding OH minus will shift the equilibrium reaction to the left, making more solid. So the acid will dissolve the solid. The base will re-precipitate uh, or precipitate more of the solid. Finally, in this last reaction, you're going to make a complex ion with cobalt and chloride. So here's your complex ion. Again, it's worth emphasizing. Look for the back and forth arrow that tells you you're dealing with an equilibrium reaction. And in this case, you have to um, figure out uh, whether this equilibrium reaction is endothermic. In this case, the delta H will be positive or here at the bottom, exothermic, where heat is a product. In this case, um, the heat will be as a product as mentioned before, but your delta H will be negative. Like before, when you dilute anything, the equilibrium will shift to the side that's more concentrated. So the more concentrated side will be this, the cobalt ion and the chloride ion. The cobalt uh, that you will add, I believe it's cobalt nitrate, has a reddish color. The complex ion is kind of bluish greenish in color. So adding water, we would predict, will shift dilution, will shift the equilibrium to the side that's more concentrated. Now, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, to answer that question, uh, you're going to put this test tube in a boiling water bath and um, look at the color change. Now, if this reaction is indeed exothermic, heat is evolved, when you add heat, essentially you're going to add more of the product if it is exothermic. And uh, so the equilibrium will counterbalance that by shifting to the left, making something that's more reddish. Or if, you, uh, if this reaction is endothermic and you remove heat, this reaction will shift to the left as well, making something that's more reddish. Uh, so in this um, experiment, you're actually going to uh, do a boiling water bath and do an ice bath. So putting the test tube in boiling water and putting the test tube on ice.